Okay, welcome back to the Getting to Know You videos. Uh, so last time what we talked about is the idea of Git push. Uh, and the idea there was you're dealing with a remote repository and we were using GitHub as our example. And you're pushing all the changes, all the commits that had to do with branches that existed on GitHub. And if they didn't match, you would, ex you would uh, explicitly specify that branch and push it to GitHub. So that next time you ran a Git push, it would uh, push all the changes over there. So now, this introduced the concept also of remote repositories. Uh, for those who don't remember, if you're sitting on your um, repository, so let me just blow this up for you guys again. Um, but we were working on my first piece of software. So if you do a git remote-v, v for verbose, you can see your remote repository is sitting right there, right? So this is the one we set up uh, for this demo. So that was the last time we talked about git Fet, uh, sorry, git push. So to uh, this video, what we're going to be dealing with is we're going to be dealing with two concepts, one called git fetch, and then really once you understand the idea of git fetch, git pull will naturally come after that. Uh, git pull is actually a command that I don't use personally a lot, um, and you'll see why that is uh, a little bit later. Okay, so again, we talked about the idea of git push. Now, we're going to talk about the other way, going from GitHub or any other remote repository and getting changes back down to us, right? And this is the idea of pulling changes down or fetching changes down to your repository, right? Now before we do that though, you have to understand something about your local repository, right? You have to understand something about uh, when we look here and we've been doing everything, you know, on this my piece of software, we've been doing all our commits, we've been looking at all our branches, uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff with our local repository, and we've been pushing changes to the remote repository. So the thing you want to understand, though, is that our current local repository, so sitting on our machine, sitting here with our local folder, is actually split up into two pieces. Okay. So the two pieces that uh, are, I'm going to talk about uh, will really help you understand this git fetch concept. Okay. So let me just blow this diagram up here. Okay, so we have GitHub, which is the remote repository, and then our local repository, which is divided into, again, two major sections. And the two sections are your local branches, okay, and those are what you've been dealing with all this time. When you type git branch, okay, this list, this blue feature, green feature, master, red feature, that's local branches. So that's actually what you've been familiar with this entire time. That's what you've been dealing with, okay? When you do a git checkout dash b my new branch, okay, that's creating a new local branch, all right? Now, the other types of branches, which we haven't actually talked about today, uh, up until today, is the idea of a remote tracking branch. I know the font's a little bit small there, okay? And what a remote tracking branch is, is just like any other branch, okay, in local branches. In other words, you can do a diff on it, you can merge from it, which is very important, by the way, um, but you can't check it out. You can't actually go check, you can't actually check it into the context of a remote tracking branch. Now the other important thing to know about a remote tracking branch is it is the key bridge between a remote repository and your own repository. Okay, so I'll see. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I look at my branches here, okay, I do a git branch. You'll see all my local branches. Okay, so that's again all the blue feature, the green feature, the master feature, uh, and red feature branches, right? So these are all those branches that you have here. And then there's actually a couple of other branches here called remote tracking branches. So if you do git branch dash r for remote, you'll actually see two other branches here. Okay, so origin slash green feature and origin slash master. Now the format of remote tracking branches is always the remote, okay, the remote repository slash the branch. Okay, so again, you can look at your remotes by doing git remote dash v, which we've done. So we have one, uh, we have one remote uh, repository called Origin, and we're allowed to fetch and push to it. Okay, and under that Origin, we have two branches: the green feature branch and the master branch. Okay. Now, the way that Git fetch works. Okay, remember Git push. Push you are pushing from your local branches straight up to GitHub. Okay. But fetching actually doesn't do the same thing. GitHub doesn't, when you do a fetch, it doesn't grab the code from GitHub and put it directly into your local branches. What it does is it pushes it into this intermediary remote tracking area, okay? So when you do a git fetch, you're basically telling uh, git to go to, the, um, go to the repository that you're fetching from 
and update all the remote tracking branches. You can think of these as just like, again, another kind of version of the code that matches the remote repository. Okay, so you're fetching into this middle area. Then it's up to you after that to manually merge from the remote tracking branch into your local branch, right? And normally the way you would do this is the branches that match, right? You can normally you would match whatever the origin master branches into your uh, local master branch, right? So once again, it's a two step process, okay? You fetch first, and then that'll update your remote tracking branches, and then you do a uh, merge to merge to your local branch, okay? Now, this will be a lot more evident if I set this up as two computers, right? I'll push from one computer and download from, uh, from another computer, okay? So here's what I'm going to do for you guys just to demo this. Okay, so I have my command prompt up here, right? I'm sitting on my first piece of software, and I'm just going to open up another window here, and this is going to act as my second computer, okay? So let me just... Uh, let me change the properties of this window. Just so we know what's what. Okay, so the yellow is going to be my second computer. Um, so here I'm sitting in my first piece of software. I'm actually going to create another directory called computer2. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone my first piece of software into computer 2, okay? So if I look at this um, and I go to my GitHub account, we're working on my first piece of software. I'm just going to do a git clone and grab this uh, git URL right there. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to grab all the uh, all the code that we've done and clone the entire repository. I have all the history, all the branches, everything uh, in comp two. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with uh, comp one. So up here, all right, I'm going to create a comp one, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clone it. Okay, so what I've effectively done is created two new repositories, right? One sitting under comp1, all right, and one sitting under comp2, okay? So picture this as two different uh, uh, people working together, okay? So what I can do is I'm going to push some changes up to GitHub, okay? So just like before, um, I'm going to go to my first piece of software. I'm going to create a new file. Okay, uh, and the branch that I'm sitting on is the master branch, and I'm just going to commit it just directly to that master branch, okay? Added new file. All right, so now it's committed on the master branch, and now I'm going to do a git push, which you know from before, and now it's updated the master branch, right? So I've made my change, and I've updated it to the GitHub uh, repository, right? So if I look at my first piece of software sitting on the master branch, there's a new file right there, right? Okay, now let's look at the other side. Okay, so this is computer one, he's done his work. Now computer two wants his changes, right? So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a git fetch. Okay, now what git fetch is going to do, it's going to update all my remote tracking branches, okay? for the origin remote, okay? Because I didn't specify the actual repository name here, it's gonna just use, assume that it's gonna be origin, okay? So I do a git fetch, and what that did is it updated my origin master remote tracking branch. Now it didn't update my green feature branch because my green feature branch was already up to date, okay? And you can see right here, master updates origin slash master. Now it's really easy to tell your remote tracking branches because they always start with the name of the remote and then a slash. OK? 
Okay, that's how you tell your remote tracking branches. So now all the changes from uh, all the changes from GitHub have made it into the remote tracking branches area. Okay. Now they haven't made it into my local branches, and that's ultimately where I want them to be. So after I've done it here, I can actually do diffs and I can actually look at the files in there, but I just can't check them out, right? I can diff them, I can look at the history of them. And the other major thing I can do is merge them, okay? So now that my origin master is updated here, I'm gonna actually merge the change from my remote tracking branch into my master branch, okay? So the way I do that is just like merging anything else. Remember how before we did a merge from green feature to master or we merged from red master to feature? We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna merge from origin master to master, okay? So the way you do that is you check out the branch that you wanna to merge to. So I'm sitting on master, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, you can see here, actually it's even giving me a little uh, heads up here that I'm actually behind the origin master. So what I do is I do a git merge and then you specify the branch that you're merging from. So in this case, origin slash master. Again, you can tell this is remote because of the name and the slash, okay? Hit enter, and then I'm done, okay? So all I've done is from GitHub, called the git fetch, and that updated my remote tracking branches. And then when I did a git merge, I specified from which branch to which branch. And now my master's updated here. Okay, so if I look at my file list now, you'll see new file is there. Okay, so the only really big kind of hurdle to understand in all this is this intermediary area, right? There's remote tracking branches. And just remember when you do a git fetch, it updates the remote tracking branches. And then you have to do a git merge to go over there, okay? And the main new command that we learned was git branch dash r to see actually your remote tracking branches, okay? Um, by the way, if you're wondering how do remote tracking branches uh, come to be, like how do they get created in the first place here? Well, the way they get created in the first place here is a couple of ways. One, if you clone a repository, they will appear in here. So all the repositories, if I did a clone of GitHub, all the branches that existed here will exist here. If you push any of your branches explicitly to GitHub, like we did in the last video, they'll appear there. Uh, and then when you do a git fetch, also any new branches that exist on the remote repository will be added here. Okay, so that's how your list of remote tracking branches uh, gets uh, gets updated. Okay, so that is git fetch. Now, what is git push? Now that you understand what git, git fetch is and the kind of workflow is usually you fetch from uh, your remote repository, then you do a git merge. All git, sorry, all git pull is, sorry, I was wording that incorrectly, is basically a git fetch followed by a git merge right after that, okay? That's what git pull is. So instead of doing the manual step of doing a git fetch and then doing a git merge, it does it all in one step. And the reason a lot of people don't use this is that it can be dangerous, right? Because you it'll update all your branches and then merge uh, the branches into your own local branch and you don't really have any say, you can't do a diff beforehand, uh, you have no control over that, if there's a conflict it'll fail. So I like the routine actually of doing a git fetch then a git merge. Uh, but git pull is also an option you can do to merge those things together. Okay? So that's it for remote repositories in terms of git push, git fetch, and git, um, git push, git fetch, and git pull. Git pull, uh, tongue twister there. Um, what we'll be doing in the next set of videos, actually, is getting more into the workflow of, um, you know, starting from a Git repository, you know, a GitHub repository online. Maybe there's some repository that you want to contribute to or you want to do that. So we'll get into forking and pull requests uh, and how to start from there. Because everything we've done until now, we start with our own repository and we push to GitHub. Uh, we'll do it the other way around in the next couple of videos. Okay, thanks.